Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Voices in My Head by Unexpected Games. The game plays three to six players, takes roughly an hour to two hours to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Voices in My Head, you're going to be playing either as the prosecutor of Guy, the person on trial, or one of his many personas. Each of the different personas that you might be playing are going to either want to have Guy convict himself or try to become innocent as much as possible or somewhere in between. As you play as Guy's personas, you're going to influence the different portions of his brain utilizing your stick and tokens and push them into different spaces like speech, observation, instinct, and motor skills. All the while, the prosecutor is attempting to play court cards and try to convict Guy using storyline sides and also determining based on what player has control or persona has control of what part of Guy's brain will determine what Guy does throughout the court case. After the end of eight rounds and two different phases of the trial, you're going to determine if Guy is innocent or guilty based on what the jury decides. You can convince the jury one way or another based on certain choices you make in the game and overall Guy's innocence or guilt in the matter. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game Voices in My Head. Let's go ahead and show you down below how it is set up, how it is played, and of course my review. To set up the game Voices in My Head, first start by taking the player board, or I should say the main game board, and placing it face up in the middle of the field in order for all players to reach. Then go ahead and shuffle and place the idea cards on any space near the board where it is within reach. Afterwards, you're going to be taking these stands and placing them around Guy's brain. These stands are going to represent different parts of the brain, like speech, planning, observation, and instinct. Make sure that they're all put around kind of like a hexagon, and the brain is going to be in the middle. After that, you're going to go ahead and give each player a player aid brain card, as well as their stick and all eight of their different tokens. You're also going to give each player two idea cards. Followed by that, you're going to go ahead and have or assign a prosecutor, depending on how you'd like to do it. The prosecutor is going to get his or her stick, as well as their tokens and their prosecutor ID, and of course, a start of trial card, which is going to allow you to set the game up. There's going to be two different types of cards. You have the Phase 1 jury deck and the Phase 2 deck. This is going to be the storyline of the game, and it will also allow the prosecutor to determine what is going to be happening with Guy. Go ahead and place the Guy's uh, prosecutor's board so that it is hidden from all players, and place the main Phase 1 deck behind it, and then place out two cards underneath it so that there is a space in the middle, left and right of that, so no one can see. After that, you're going to place all the extra tokens and player aids aside and any of the different guilty or innocent or somewhere in between tokens near the jury because you're going to be utilizing those. Read the start of trial card and determine any additional setup needed, whether it be giving certain jurors innocent perspectives or guilty perspectives or somewhere in between. And then, of course, the game is ready. Playing the game Voices in My Head is quite simple, and it works in phases, and there are eight rounds, and then there are going to be five different phases. For the first round, you're going to start by choosing a trial card. Now how that works is the prosecutor has their game board and it is hidden from sight. And behind it is three cards. And that prosecutor is going to choose one of those three cards and then take the one they'd like, place it in the middle, and slide it out so that that card can be seen by all other players. But only the top portion so that other players will know what portions of Guy's mind are going to be used for manipulation in this portion of the trial. Then you're going to go ahead and have players to deploy control markers. Based on who was selected as the first player from the start of trial card, that player is going to take their stick as well as any one of their tokens, place it on the brain, and then push it into one of the five areas of Guy's brain, speech, instinct, motor skills, etc., and slide it as though they're playing one of those nickel games in an arcade machine. After it has been slidden and it has been pushed as far as it can go, then that is going to pass the turn to the next player to then have them place their control marker out onto Guy's brain and once again place it or slide it into another area or the same area of the uh, brain of Guy. If at any point you slide or push one of these markers uh, and somebody else's falls, that marker is gone forever. And each of these markers has a certain value on them. And the more value equals the more likely you'll control Guy for that specific phase. After everybody has deployed a control marker, and that includes the prosecutor, you move on to the next phase, which is to resolve the trial card. You're going to take that card that you selected and showed to all players, and you're going to read it as the prosecutor hidden. You'll say what it does, all the flavor text, and then you're going to check. Prosecutor, place one jury token on the one guilty token on the judgmental jurors. So they will go ahead and take a guilty token, oop, one of these guys here, look for the judgmental jurors, and place it on them. 
Then you're gonna go ahead and speak the next one, which is gonna be observation. You'll check the specific area in guy's brain, and this is the case, it would be observation, and you'll see who has the most value there. So if there was yellow with a two and a one, that would be three, and blue with a two, that would be two, and then yellow would be the one who would decide whatever this card says. However, if nobody is there or if it is a tie, the first player will decide who gets to make the deciding factor for Guy here. In which case, whoever was the person who won that area of Guy's brain would look at the top influence token of any juror and either discard it or place it on a different juror. Influence tokens are the question marks that could either be guilty, innocent, or none of the above. And so that player will be able to do that. After that, the prosecutor will flip the card over and do the second part, saying, okay, here's a new portion of flavor text, and this is for speech. And this is going to ask, they're going to ask a question. So it'll say, this is irrelevant, ask uh, your lawyer to object, or stick, sing staying alive at the top of your lungs. The person who uh, has control of speech will decide which of these two different choice options they're going to pick, and then the prosecutor will read only the one or answer of the one that they chose, in which case maybe it would be placing an innocent token on the judgmental jurors, or placing a guilty token on the judgmental jurors. After that, this card is going to be discarded. You're going to move on to draw cards. You're going to have the prosecutor draw the top card of their deck and place it in the middle area, and you're going to have the player who controls the planning area of Guy's brain draw one of these idea cards. Idea cards can be used at any point in the game as long as they say so. Sometimes they will have a certain requirement of you, and they're going to give you a benefit of some type. But that player is going to receive these cards, and there's no limit to the number of cards that they can have of those types. Then pass the first player marker. You will take the first player marker, pass it clockwise around the board, and the next player is then going to once again begin. Have the prosecutor choose a trial card, deploy control markers based on the first player, resolve the trial deck card, draw new cards, and the first player will then pass. After four rounds of this, you're then going to go ahead and discard all of the Trial 1 cards, and you're going to have the Trial 2 cards. And this will change the game, the way of game play, the flow of the game, and even the type of story that is going to happen as Guy goes on trial. These will get discarded, new ones come out, and you'll play the game just the same as you normally would, passing the markers around, pushing the markers onto the control spaces, and having the first player switch up until the point where the game is going to end after the eighth round. Once the game ends, you're going to check all the jury, and what you'll do actually is you'll take the start trial marker, that, or the card that you started with, and you'll flip it over to end of trial. You'll read whatever it says, and then you're going to do the specific things listed in order. Each persona reveals what their role is, so certain roles will want Guy to be innocent, others guilty, and somewhere in between. Then you'll reveal all influence tokens on the jurors, and then you'll have them cancel each other out. So if there's two innocent and one guilty, the guilty and innocent will cancel out, and that juror will think that Guy is innocent. <laughs> and you'll do that for each and every one of them. And then you'll determine the winners of the game. Each of the specific personas are going to have a specific type of role and will require you to do a specific thing, like have two or more jurors think that Guy is uh, innocent and have the fewest destroyed tokens uh, of all the players. So you don't want these tokens to fall off of the board. And uh, each player can win. There's no rule as to how many players uh, necessarily can win or lose in this game. You could have three players win, four, all of them, or even possibly none of them. But determine those winners, and whoever was able to successfully accomplish their mission with Guy is the winner in the game, Voices in My Head. Voices in My Head is a unique game. It's kind of an area control game, it's a management game, and it's also a story-driven game. This game is all about utilizing your persona and role in order to uh, attempt to convince Guy to do what you want him to do, and also convince the jury based on what Guy's actions are going to be. If Guy stands up on his on, on the desk and starts dancing around doing the Macarena, it's very likely that the jurors are going to see him in a disfavorable light and most likely want to convince uh, convict him of being guilty. However, if he's straight, structured, and postured, he's more likely to make the jurors consider himself to be innocent. And depending on what your role is will determine what you want to do in the story. Now, you're not necessarily going to know what the story cards entail when you read them and what you choose, but for the most part, they are congruent with the choices and actions that you would like to make. For instance, if if I were to read one of them. Your Honor, we just learned that one of the jurors attended summer camp with Guy when they were kids. I ask to reevaluate this juror. The prosecutor will do something, and the instinct will do something, and then you'll flip it over and once again continue. Now, not, all, not always are they going to have choices, but when they do, and I'll go ahead and find one for you right here, you're going to be able to convince the jurors one way or another. So for instance, it says, your, your lawyer tries to restore your confidence during his examination. Can you tell us why you have the nickname Guy? Or Nice Guy? <laughs> speech, choose one. So the speech player is going to choose one. 
I do a lot of charity work, or I can start laughing for no reason whatsoever. Well, Guy, if he were to choose to start laughing, it's going to make jurors uh, unamenable to his cause, whereas if he says he does a lot of charity work, maybe more likely. And in fact, charity work is going to allow you to place an innocent token on the distracted jurors. However, if you start laughing uncontrollably, he'll be placing a guilty token on the distracted jurors. So you kind of have an idea of what these choices are going to lead to as far as what outcomes and results, which is a nice little twist to the game. Uh, additionally, too, if you want to play the advanced mode, which is what I strongly suggest, each of these tokens have abilities, and based on when you place them, you'll be able to do certain things with them, whether it be to destroy their player's tokens, or to protected tokens, etc., etc. Even the prosecutor is going to have certain tokens that they can utilize that involve the cards and other player's tokens. The prosecutor himself or herself is also going to be pushing uh, these tokens aside and trying to get the jurors, that the, or the, the personas that they think are best going to fit or align with them, to help them out. And and utilizing these tokens is very imperative to them, along with destroying tokens and utilizing the special abilities provided that you are using them. Each of these different roles plays a role as well. In fact, not only are you going to be using these markers here, but you have to designate the jurors to fit your persona's required uh, traits and, of course, your identity. And all the while, you're trying to kind of manipulate the board. Whether or not you control everything or not doesn't typically mean you're going to win or lose. Sometimes the, the, you might make a wrong choice, other players might be able to calculate at the very last second or utilize their idea cards to manipulate the board in order for them to win. Uh, just because you do not need the planning phase or planning space uh, to be able, be able to manipulate what Guy does, doesn't mean you can't utilize cards when placing your tokens down to manipulate what the jurors think. Because at the end of the day, it only matters what the jurors are deciding and whether or not Guy is innocent or guilty and what spaces you can control based on what your role is. The game is simple and straightforward. In fact, this is about one to two hours. I would actually say it's less time. I think we played this with four and five players and uh, both times it was probably under an hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes, uh, two hours. I don't think even if you play all six players, you'd have to run into that problem. Uh, this plays an average medium style board game. The artwork for the game is excellent. Excellent artwork, I love the idea of the different types of spaces that you utilize Guy's brain. Um, uh, I, I enjoy all the different uh, fun, uncanny artwork that is going to be based on the different types of personas and roles that you're going to be partaking in, and the different types of jurors, too, and how the types of uh, jurors are going to be based on what they might be or perceive things to be. A laid-back juror is kind of chill, impulsive is kind of more like uh, <laughs> upfront about certain things when they come out, and based on what the trial cards indicate is who you're going to be manipulating throughout the game and who you can kind of push and pull these tokens to to try and convince people that he is either innocent or he is uh, guilty. Theming of the game is great. It feels and flows with the story. You understand that guy is on trial. There's never a point in time where you don't understand what's going on or why you're trying to do what you're trying to do. It's more of a matter of fact what you can do and whether or not what you're doing is going to actually help or hinder your cause throughout the game. The planning cards or the event cards, whatever these guys are called, the idea cards, uh, are very useful as well. But they require certain things in order for you to be able to achieve them. Sometimes you might not be able to. Maybe you don't ever get the required... Uh thing to do so, like for instance, maybe you need to have control of observation or motor skills and you don't have the tokens to do so, or somebody else is so far up along that way, in which case the card's not going to be very useful, and which means that the planning is going to be something that you're going to kind of want to do or hit, hit or miss. Sometimes it's relevant, sometimes it's not. And I would usually strongly suggest the prosecutor not bother with this area and focus more on the other spaces. Uh, the mechanics of the game are, are really fun. This reminds me kind of of one of those nickel games that you played when you were a kid, most likely, at the arcades, where you drop the nickel in, it slides down, it falls, it lands flat, then there's this little rotary thing or motor that pushes the nickel, and the nickel pushes other nickels, and they fall in. That's kind of how this works as well. You'll be taking these little tokens here and using your stick and sliding them in. And as you can see, as I slide these guys, they're eventually going to knock each other off. And that's kind of the point of the game, is to kind of push to control the areas of Guy's brain, have the most influence there, and remove other players. And with the unique abilities and, and uh, tokens, that can actually get your guys back, your tokens back. But in the base game, not so much. Okay, so what do I think about this game? This game functions really, really well when you're playing the advanced mode of the game. I enjoyed the extra token aspects to them. I enjoyed the extra different role cards. In fact, I think they're necessary, almost mandatory. Now, it does tell you a great setup to begin with, and it gives you the three different main types of personas that you'll be playing as and roles, um, and those work just fine. But however, I feel like that uh, one of the innocent ones is going to be a little bit more challenging to complete than the other ones. There's one that requires you to quite literally... Um, 
have equal to or more innocent than guilty. And when you have one player working to have the exact opposite and the prosecutor also, it's kind of a 2v1. And it's almost obvious in sometimes what you're trying to do when you're playing a very obvious role in which players know what your role is. So mixing those up and picking them randomly based on the different types is going to make a huge difference in gameplay. And then of course, even pushing this, these things on. Pushing them on in general as the base game goes, it's just a value game. Whoever has the most value is the winner and gets to decide the event and the story. But with the added different abilities that change uh, the choices you're going to make for the tokens, that adds a nice little tinge of a different element that I would attach it to. Uh, this game here specifically, I'm going to always want to play the advanced mode. I'm going to always want to play with the additional roles and mix them up. And of course, um, I'm going to always want to play as the prosecutor. This is a really fun and uh, unique different type of... Uh, role in the game that kind of allows you to manipulate the story, which is a lot of fun, and decide who gets to do what, and you're always trying to figure out information about the personas more than they are about each other in some ways, because you want to find people that are aligning with you to help you and utilize your tokens to kind of push them off. If I think yellow is not on my team, I'm going to want to get that player off of the board. Overall, Voices in My Head is an excellent game. If you enjoy that type of thing, it can be a little frustrating. It can be a little paranoid. You can have a little paranoia as to who's doing what. But overall, high quality, a lot of fun, <laughs> really, really unique and interesting style gameplay. And of course, a one versus many, but all the players are not necessarily working with each other or the prosecutor. You have kind of your own dilemmas and roles in the game. Yes. Take a look at this game if you're interested in playing it. I had a lot of fun with it. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Voices in My Head by Unexpected Games. If you'd like to pick this up, there's a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Hit that subscribe bell button as well as the notification button or the bu subscribe button and the notification button and go ahead and check out our website as well unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We have a new game coming out, Zero Day, which will be announcing some artwork fairly shortly, uh, hopefully a Kickstarter, as of course our previous game, Moonshell, at unfilteredgames.com, where you can pick up my wife's game, uh, Moonshell, a mermaid game. It's a puzzle style game. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. And as always, I look forward to getting the voices out of my head next time. <laughs> <laughs>